gentle marketers, welcome to season number seven and episode 51 of the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, the show where we talk about marketing your business by disrupting the current marketing paradigm and changing it to a gentler approach, one that's based on empathy and kindness. As always, I'm Sarah Zinokrovich, I'm the host here, and you know that you're in the right place if you are a heart-centered entrepreneur or change maker who is looking for a different, a better way to market your business. Or you might also be a marketing impact pioneer, so someone who's working for a bigger organization, but one that does business for good. This episode falls under the P of passion and purpose, and more specifically, we're talking about not knowing your calling, together with my friend Kat Rose from thecreativeintrovert.com. Real quick before we begin, quick announcement. In about three months from now, I'll be running a Kickstarter campaign for my upcoming Gentle Marketing Revolution book. I talk more about this in episode 50 when I share my latest book update. I really look forward to it. Uh, I think it'll be really fun and I'd love for you to participate. So I I already set up a pre-launch page and you can find it by going to sarasenacroce.com forward slash Kickstarter. I'll also put the link in the show notes. Um, For now, it's just a kind of a pre-launch page that's there, but uh, I'd love for for you to give me some Kickstarter love over there, and then you get notified when we go live in December. And of course, I'll keep you posted here too, what I'm working on, what's all the th- things that go into creating a Kickstarter campaign and, and all of that. So sarasanacoche.com forward slash Kickstarter. So back to this episode. So today, as I said, we're talking about our calling and how to find it and what to do if we don't find it. How much we want to actually control our calling so that's a question I asked uh, Kat, and we go into that, like how much has the ego and this notion of control to do with our calling? And then Kat shares her cupcake versus breadcrumbs decision-making process. You'll just have to listen to the whole episode to find out what this cupcake versus breadcrumbs thing is. We also talk about vision boards and whether to do them or not, and so much more. Kat Rose is from London and currently lives by the sea in Brighton, UK. She works with creative introverts who dream of making a living from their art in a way that feels good to them. She does this through her weekly show, The Creative Introvert, so another podcast uh, that I highly recommend you check out if you fall into the, uh, the, the this introverted uh, spectrum. She talks about astrology and uh also has an online community called the League of Creative Introverts. Also, in full disclosure, Kat is the one that uh, helped me in the initial um, kind of uh, times to put the book together. So really, uh, we had six sessions together, and she really just helped me with the structure of the book. So really, I, I love her creative approach and and just how deep we can go together. So uh, without further ado, here's Kat and I talking about calling or not finding your calling. Enjoy. Hi, Kat. So good to speak to you again. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, it's always good for us to have a chat. Yeah. I wanted to get you on to talk about a topic that I saw you posting on your podcast, The Creative Introvert. And, uh, and I'm always kind of talking about that as well. I had one episode where I shared the story of me finding my why or my why finding me or however you want to turn it. But this idea of you know finding your calling or not finding your calling or not knowing what your calling is, so kind of a conversation around that, right? Because yeah. it seems like you've been doing a lot of thinking around that topic as well. Yeah, I have. But like, I still feel it's, the form that it's in now is quite a recent thing. Mm-hmm. And I've been reflecting on this a lot recently. So we can talk about various reflections. But one thing that has struck me recently was that 
let's say the, the early days of the creative introvert. So this is when I first started the online business, started blogging, eventually podcasting. And I realize now that my main, like, why, or at least like my main drive, I mean, maybe we need to talk about what meaning and purpose and calling actually is. But mm -hmm. anyway, the thing that was kind of getting me out of bed in the morning at the beginning was productivity. Like, how can I do more? And getting a big kind of kick out of that. This ultimately kind of transformed into um, effectiveness, especially when I kind of found the work of Tim Ferriss yeah. and, you know, started to be like, no, I, I don't have to work as much. It's more about like, you know, how effective am I uh -huh. getting things done? And then that went on for a little while. And a lot of my earlier podcasts are based around subjects touching on that. And then that kind of dropped away. I mean, who knows how, maybe that's something to, I need to look at. But I had this, I think it's 2018. Yeah, that was my year of fun. I don't know if you remember that when I was yeah. doing like a weekly fun thing. Yes. And this is kind of my attempt to loosen up a bit and maybe find, without using those words, but kind of finding meaning in more diverse things in life, let's say, rather than what my output was. And then more recently, this has kind of transformed again into a bigger search about calling and purpose. And yeah, it sounds vague and it is. <laughs> it, it's interesting because it feels like we kind of were on a similar path trying to outsmart our way into, you know, our calling and kind of like fitting the calling to ourselves rather mm -hmm. than just kind of following the, the natural or er, organic path. And yeah. I remember when I first read Simon Sinek's book, Start With The Why, I saw this why as another thing on my to-do list. And yes. that's thing that I had to check off. And it's like, oh, everybody's talking about this why. Uh, I guess I need to kind of figure it out mentally. It was always my mind who had to figure things out. How to now fit into this form of you know, what was expected of me as a good business owner or as a heart-centered business owner. Is, oh, you have to have a why. All right, let me figure this out. That, that's so funny. I totally agree with what you're saying about fitting our calling into like our, our kind of preconceived idea of what that should be. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was definitely doing that. Like I remember one time sending an email to Derek Sivers. I don't know if you know who that is, but yeah, yeah really interesting guy. And mm -hmm. I was basically kind of having a little breakdown where I was like, I don't think my why is good enough. You know, what, what do I do? I, I, I think it's like, um, you know, it's selfish. I, I was like listing all of these things I think was wrong with it. Uh -huh. And he was just like, it actually doesn't matter. Like if the end result is something um, positive, he gave the example of, you know, if like two brothers, they were both maybe like abused by their parents. One of them goes off and, you know, starts a charity because of that. And one of them goes off and like kills a bunch of people because of that. Their why is the same, but their actual, what they do in the world is, is very different. So that did get me thinking a lot more. Yeah. So, so maybe let's yeah define the calling or the mm -hmm. why or 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 maybe you can also call it destiny and all, all these terms. So so for you, what what does that mean? Uh, your calling or or your why? Yeah. So at the moment, it, it definitely feels like something that is a felt thing. So you know, because because what it actually looks like is obviously going to be quite different for everyone. And the way I'm kind of thinking about it more is this idea of a path that you're in a way like, you know, this is probably going to rub some people up the wrong way, but that you're predestined to walk on. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that path, just because it's predestined, has to be as specific as like, you know, you're, you're destined to build a very big pink house. Like, I <laughs> <laughs> don't know where that came from. <laughs> yeah, that's quite good. But you know, I, I don't think it has to be as specific as that. But uh, there are certain themes, and I do think that my work with astrology has kind of opened me up to these ideas a lot more. But let's say that there are certain like life themes that you kind of that are maybe unavoidable for you, and when you go against them, that's when we start to get those those hints that you know something's wrong here I need to course correct and and this is why I think it feels so 
difficult when we're in those moments because we're asking questions like, you know, why am I doing this? What's the, what's the purpose? What's the meaning of it all? Because it's out there, but we're not aligned with it. But how do we, I don't know, fit those puzzle pieces together? Yeah, I recently watched the film, rewatched it, our American Beauty. Mm-hmm. And this is just like a ridiculous example, but of like somebody basically having a midlife crisis. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's weird because it just made me reflect on like the different ways that somebody might find meaning in their life. And it's really, really, really varied. But I do think it's quite a common experience for people to get to that point of like something isn't working here, something is very broken. I think so. And in a way, it's almost like we, have to go that path in order to actually no let me say that again maybe maybe for some people they know immediately and they just follow that from a very early age they 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 know what their calling is and they just follow that path um for other people i think we actually need to have these experiences of you know breakdowns and then breakthroughs in order to yeah, course correct and say, okay, well, I tried that path. <laughs> that, that just didn't work. Let me, you know, now really go deep within and listen. And, and now I can maybe understand which path is for me. So I really liked Elizabeth Gilbert, who was talking about that, where, where she explained it with this example of jackhammers and hummingbirds. So the jackhammers, they know from very early on and they just go deeper and deeper and deeper where the hummingbird was is kind of like going from flower to flower to flower and and taking little information from one place to the next in order to finally see the big picture and go oh that's what i was always supposed to do meant to do and and giving that big aha you know much later on maybe yeah resonate with you oh it it really does and yeah something I I kind of skipped and it's yeah I'm just kind of thinking about like I always think about Liz Gilbert when it comes to the dark night of the soul like Mm -hmm. reading Eat Pray Love and she kind of describes the like archetypal dark night of the soul at the beginning and in a way it's sort of like reassuring to know that that's yeah that that's just what some some of us have to experience and I think it was the thing that I was avoiding and probably still am so I had assumed I told myself the story all my life I draw things like that's that's my jam like that's what I do and you know I haven't I, I draw things as a hobby now but it's it's not really what I'm doing in the world it doesn't currently feel like that's actually what I'm here for it's just a very very enjoyable thing so when I had so to start you told yourself the story of that's my calling yeah. And then there's the cognitive dissonance of realizing I'm not even doing that. That's not what I'm known for. Like right. it's maybe some people have seen me draw a few things, but it's, it's not like this big thing. It doesn't feel like that. Right. Whereas other things that I've been doing, even though there isn't such an easy, nice narrative to them, they feel a lot closer to whatever this path is for me. So like you were saying at the beginning about, you know, not fitting our calling into our own um, assumption about it that was something that maybe I've been seeing much more recently myself and asking those questions like well if, if I can't <laughs> tell my calling what it is how can how can it tell me that like how, how can I be receptive to that mm-hmm. yeah yeah I think it was also Liz who who was saying you know just follow your curiosity and it feels to me watching from the outside that that's what you've been doing with astrology. Mm. So what would you say about astrology? Do you feel like you found your calling or is that just a, for now, curiosity that you're following? Yeah, I feel like I'd be very presumptive. Like I would be jinxing it if I said that that was it. <laughs> but it's interesting, to, you know, I could look at a couple of things in my chart and be like, oh, actually astrology seems to be it could be in my chart even. Right. That's interesting. But yes, yeah, so there are a bunch of other things, yeah. other possibilities. All I know is, yeah, that idea of like following my curiosity, that has been so helpful. Now I talk a lot about curiosity as something that helps us in moments of fear. How can we remain kind of curious in those moments and maybe see them through? But it's the same with this. It's like, I guess we are facing some kind of fear 
which is, you know, what the hell am I doing with my life? Staring into the, the unknown. Yeah. That, that's, that's real challenging for us. We don't know what the story is going to look like, but following those little um, breadcrumbs that interest us. Yeah. That's, that's been really helpful for me and, and not easy, you know, at times, you know, I've kind of gotten to the place now where I've somehow managed to integrate astrology in with what I was doing with the creative introvert, but that wasn't my first instinct. My first instinct was like, I have to hide this. <laughs> um, no one can know about this. It has to be a separate thing. Maybe I have to have like a pseudonym. And then I kind of got over myself and realized that was my ego getting in the way. That was my fear speaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In a way that makes me also think of how our idea of calling or maybe it's also the definition of success, how, how that can be influenced by others. So by our parents, um, you know, our upbringing and, and then by society as lar at large as well. So, so, you know, you thinking maybe this astrology thing, or you should better hide it. Well, maybe that's because you thought, well, yeah, well, what is, what are people going to think? You know, mm -hmm. they're going to think I'm this woo woo person or mm -hmm. so in a way, these things also get influenced by, other people and and really saying no this is what i'm here to do and if that thing doesn't really resonate with the society at large we're like well maybe that's not it I'd better hide that thing right yeah i think that's one of the biggest challenges people face and i can think back to some of the my own stories that i was told like yeah let's say that the drawing thing that was encouraged but not that much there was still the story of, you know, that's going to be difficult to make a living in and, and things like that. And, you know, maybe if I hadn't been told that, there would have been a different story. And maybe my calling would have shaped more to that. Mm -hmm. Other things like my mum being like, oh, why, why, why didn't any of you become doctors? You're all like creatives. And, <laughs> you know, we kind of ignore these things, but they're still there. They still linger as what we think, like you said, society deems acceptable. And certainly, yeah, like, talking about creativity, introversion, I could get away with. Astrology was like a whole other step. Right. So yeah, that, that's challenging. Yeah. Also, in a way, these three months of coronavirus and confinement, you know, the word control definitely is a big word, I think, that we kind of had to grapple with because there was literally no more control over anything, never mind talking about controlling your calling. Yeah. So kind of learning to live with this uncertainty and, and releasing the grip, that, that's really what these three months were about, I think, for many of us. And, and I'm, I'm thinking if that happened when I was on my you know, journey to find my why. So like three months ago, uh, sorry, three years ago, I think that would have really helped me actually, because it's almost like the world gave us a pause to reflect upon these things. And, and uh, there was just literally in no, yeah, nowhere was there a control to be exerted mm -hmm. anymore. And, and, and so it really gave us that permission to, to let go of control and just to trust that we will be on our path to, to, f to find our calling or our why. Yeah, in a way, as much as I love my control, um, it's been such a blessing to have that. And not just to kind of undo some of those patterns, but also to create this sense of relief like I didn't realize how um, much pressure was I was kind of putting on myself to have a plan and manifest that, right? That That's something that I guess a lot of my earlier content and even more recent stuff has been geared towards, which is, you know, have a vision and then take the steps to make it happen, have a plan. And realizing partly because of uh, what happened with COVID, but also in my own experience of traveling, last in 2019 um just realizing that <clears throat> you can have all these plans and they're nice they like for, for somebody like me and INTJ that that makes me feel quite at ease <laughs> and then when it all kind of falls apart yeah th there's definitely a lot of challenge in that but at the on the other side of that is a sense of relief like oh the pressure's off I don't have to follow this plan to a T 
there might be something else here. And maybe, like you said, I can just kind of trust um, that I will be directed maybe in a way. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a, such a somewhat difficult uh, thing to talk about because on one hand we, you know, have these businesses that we want to run and, and want to succeed. And, and so there's a, a lot of doing involved and, and, and planning right now, as you know, I'm, I'm planning this Kickstarter campaign and there is an, a lot of planning involved. And so on one hand, I'm like, okay, I'm planning these things, but at the same time, I'm trying to say, okay, I trust that the right thing will happen and the right people will see it. And so it's a fine line between letting go and yet showing up and, and actually, you know, implementing, I, I'm not so much, you know, in favor of the, the just like manifesting and law of attraction and just sit back and everything will come to me if I repeat it often enough. So in a way there's, there's, you know, somewhere a middle ground yeah. where it's, yeah, it's both and, and, and I find like, it's such a, almost a contradiction because we're, you know, we're all meditating and t- trying to live in the present. And at the same time, we're continuously planning six months, one-year plans, financial plans. And so all this planning, and yet then we have to meditate even more to be <laughs> able to focus on the present. It, it's a lot to try to do. And yes. it's you just kind of want to throw your hands up in the air at some point. But yeah, I, I really liked what you're saying about it being both. And, you know, what does that look like? And something that also came to mind when you were speaking is this sense of humility and the idea of staying open, which, yeah, I mean, that humility piece is like, I'm not 100% responsible for every good thing that ever happened in my business. Actually, there are a lot of other factors that I couldn't control that have really helped me. And that, you know, takes some humility to kind of think like that. Whereas in the past, when I, I personally was into the law of attraction, and it was just kind of thinking, I got that because I thought good thoughts, which is just mm-hmm. not my way of thinking right now. But yeah, and, and that thing of like having a plan, but staying open. And yeah, similarly, I can, I can see you doing that. And it feels more like, like a daily process, right? Because we're having our plan, which might stretch out into the distant future. But every day, maybe we're required to um, check in with ourselves keep coming back to that question of, you know, is this still, does this still feel right? And having that humility to kind of go back and maybe change course if we need to. Yeah. I also loved how you described this decision-making process where you had this example of the cupcake versus the breadcrumbs. Mm. So can you explain <laughs> yeah. So of course it had to be a food based analogy. <laughs> so it, my idea is it's kind of it works because it's visual, right? So for me the path is like literally a path, let's say. And on that path, you know, we've heard the Jack and Jill story. Is it sorry, it's, it's not Jack and Jill, it's who am I thinking about? <laughs> the two kids who go to a forest and Yeah, Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> Hansel and Gretel, <laughs> not Jack and Jill. <laughs> anyway, poor Hansel and Gretel. Um <laughs> You know, and there's this idea of breadcrumbs leading to the path. Yeah. Um, anyway, it, maybe the the mythology there gets a little bit messy, but the cupcake is something that looks way more appealing than the breadcrumb. But this is something that would take us further away from the path that we're meant to be on. And and that's kind of what I mean about this decision making process. When we're at a crossroads, maybe we can ask ourselves does this seem like a breadcrumb, which, you know, if I, even if it's not very substantial looking now, maybe it can turn into something and lead back to the path. Or is this the cupcake, which I know I'm going to get like an instant hit of like sugar and and good feelings from it, but ultimately it, it won't be very satisfying. And like as a kind of more realistic example, we might see this in times when somebody is asked, you know, they're not loving their job and then their boss calls them in and wants to give them a promotion. And they were just about to like, you know, they were thinking about handing in their notice, but this promotion is becomes a cupcake and it feels very appealing, but they have to kind of be honest with themselves and think, 
actually no, that that Etsy store that I've been building in the background is actually, you know, it's it's growing slowly but steadily. It's not as attractive um, as this big promotion. But, you know, and, and there there you have a kind of decision to make. And if somebody is learning to get in tune with what those breadcrumbs are, I think that's ultimately what's going to lead them onto the path. Yeah, I love that. I, I think at the same time, obviously, we, we don't always know. We don't exactly. see ahead, right? So we don't exactly know, okay, you know, here is my 10 next breadcrumbs. So sometimes we have to go to the next cupcake and then mm-hmm. go, oh, wow, that really wasn't so fulfilling as, mm-hmm. as I thought. And so then it's like, well, you know, here is my next breadcrumb. So, I, so I, I think it's difficult to, you know, already be able to connect the dots or the breadcrumbs if you yeah. don't, like most of us don't know what, what's coming, what the next thing is. But I think you will notice, and it's a feeling thing, as you said in the beginning, it's a feeling thing. You notice whether this is a breadcrumb or a cupcake, whether it's an instant hit of, you know, usually it's the instant hits are for the ego. Right. Yeah, yeah, totally. I made a bunch of money. I got promoted. I, you know, spoke on a big stage. Those are the the big hits and the cupcakes and where the breadcrumbs. Maybe right now we don't even know how they'll have an impact and and where the future breadcrumbs are going to be. But you you know that they somehow it will add up to a path. Completely, and I think. Just to reassure people out there who do think that that sounds very challenging, yeah, it was for me. I'm not the most naturally intuitive person, or at least that's the story I'm telling myself. And I've had to kind of be patient with that and make a deliberate effort to practice feeling, just feeling, okay, what does this um, moment in time, how do I feel right now? Journaling really helps me with that. But also just then kind of getting into that habit of, doing that feelings check and I have noticed that if if I'm not like you know we all have different ways of responding to things there was a great book I read about intuition which I will give you the link for the show notes because the author's name Lynn Robinson I think that's her name Mm -hmm. yeah and she gives like very practical steps for different techniques of kind of developing this sense of intuition and I found it very helpful but yeah, and, and like you said, over time, not instantly for most people, but over time, those breadcrumbs decisions do feel a certain way. And yeah, and, and it's definitely not linear. It's like, I will still make, guaranteed, I'll still make a lot of cupcake-based decisions, <laughs> but we learn from those. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me that, and you know this because you uh, helped me with my book that I'm writing, right? And it, it reminds me at the end, I kind of talk about integrating and you know going maybe from a more traditional marketing model to a gentle marketing model and I do say well you know there's there are gonna be cupcake decisions I don't refer to the cupcakes because I didn't hear you talk about that yet but in a way it's like well make sure you're safe first Mm -hmm. I think those were that's what cupcake decisions are, is about as well. It's like, let's make sure that we are safe. We have food on the table. Those are also in a way cupcake decisions and that we have to keep taking those because um, otherwise it, it, it's again a bit too much in the, you know, just trusting the universe out there, which is great. But at the same time, we all still have bills to pay. So yeah, it's, it's a slow transition and, and, and I, I, yeah, also not to be too hard on ourselves if we do uh, make those cupcake decisions. Yeah, I love that. I'm really glad you brought up the point about safety and because it would be really, I think, irresponsible for me to, to even say to myself, oh, Kat, you know, just go with the flow, trust the universe. And yeah. while I do think that there is guaranteed going to be um, moments where we have to have trust or faith mm-hmm. in into into our into our intuition and these breadcrumbs that we might choose because because they're not guaranteed things this is not it's usually not like a logic based rational decision but on the other side of that it's like are we being sensible enough to be taking care of our basic needs because it's honestly like i don't think any breadcrumb is worth it if 
if you're feeling so scared that you're, you know, like freaking out, having panic attacks, like it's just yeah. not worth it. Like I, well, I have enough faith in my intuition that it won't let me get so scared, you know, or say, you know, I kind of personify it as a diamond, um, actually a little fox. <laughs> but I, I don't think that that being, this imaginal being would would make me do something that felt so terrifying. It, it's still, even if it was, you know, ultimately the thing that I end up doing, it would be like, okay, that's too scary for you right now. Take the cupcake now and you'll still get back to your path. But that's where you're at and that's that's good. Yeah. So again, we have, I think, a decent amount of wiggle room with all of this. Just because we chose a cupcake once doesn't mean we won't get back onto the path. Yeah, that's so good. So in a way, you're saying your intuition will also tell you what's safe and what's not safe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the example I gave in that podcast about the calling was, well, maybe it's about the diamond. Uh, Socrates described his daimon, or you could think about it as his intuition or inner voice. And it, it wouldn't tell him what to do. It would just tell him what not to do. Mm. So in a way, it was like quite the opposite. It wasn't telling him to take these like scary leaps. I mean, some of the decisions I'm sure were quite scary. I'm pretty sure it told him uh, not to run away when people were going to kill him. So it kind of ended up getting him killed. But anyway, it's, it is interesting to think that you know, it it doesn't guarantee that we're going to end up having to do things that don't feel feel like we can get some sense of safety in them. There is a safe way of doing these things. I'm, I'm sure of it. Yeah, that's yeah. It's it's reassuring because I think sometimes this word intuition already has this connotation of oh, that's just a bunch of woo woo, um, mm-hmm. and you know that that's gonna take the not not pragmatic decisions but what you're saying is like no no no, your intuition will also make sure that you're first of all safe and then from there yes it will help you find your path but always making sure that first of all you're you're safe and you know your bills are paid so I think that's very reassuring and and hopefully uh, gets people to yeah listen more to their inner voice or what, what do you call it? Daemon? Yeah. 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 It's, I guess that's an old Greek word for it, but different cultures have, have had this idea of a being that is guiding us actually back to our path, right? Back to whatever we were here to do. Mm-hmm. And this is like, a, I guess, a mythological idea, but it just st- still feels very practical, honestly, in, in my INTJ brain. Like I, for me, it's a lot easier to think of a being than to think of this abstract scientific idea. Mm. Yeah. So it's interesting. I, I'm sure that has something to do with with you know personality types and mm. and and like you said, you're um a, a T I N F T J. No. Yeah, I N T J. INTJ. Where for me the INFJ, the intuition is kind of almost built into my right. wiring. And so I don't have this mental block towards, you know, what what the heck is intuition anyways. <laughs> so yeah. so yeah, it's it's really interesting to hear that it helps you kind of picture that in a in a being form rather than just think it's this vague thing that I I need to trust yeah I'd be interested in asking your audience about that like because I feel like I do need visuals to make sense of things but I feel like that like you said it's more of a t thing than an f thing maybe yeah yeah um, yeah interesting as we send our listeners off on their own path you know to find their calling or let their calling find them what, what would you what would you what kind of advice or wisdom would you um send them with yeah I mean I don't want to be just going over the same thing again because I tell people to do this a lot but I do think having a, a writing practice of some kind is really helpful with this so for me you know different people have different ways of doing this but Jess Lively is somebody who's shared a lot about this in the past and was the first person who introduced me to this idea of writing to the inner voice. And this could be like, you're asking a question, one of those decisions, one of those potential bread crumb or cupcake decisions, you actually write it out and kind of pay attention to yourself, 
to see what bubbles up in, in that moment. And sometimes those questions don't get answered straight away. Uh, I have many occasions where I'm just like, yep, I'm getting nothing. Uh, this is not my day. But that answer, that question like lingers somewhere and the answer does come. So that has been helpful. You know, classics like having a some kind of contemplative meditation practice. Uh, and again, that's going to look different for different types of people, but it could be something to explore if you haven't explored it. And again, remaining curious to what is what, what you're getting called to. And I, I really like that word calling because it does feel like something is beckoning us and we don't necessarily have to justify it. I think that was one of my problems was having to justify every decision. Like, why would I do astrology? <laughs> and instead of just going with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. I, yeah, I wonder where that comes from, this need to justify. I, I guess it's also the the influence of the outside. It's like, yeah, you know, the, like, please explain why you're doing this. It's like, well, I don't know. It's just that's where my curiosity took me. Yeah, right. it's interesting. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time. We'll make sure, sure to link to those two episodes that we mentioned so the the calling and the forgot the name again again already damon Damon. (laughs) please do share also your just your main website and the name of your podcast yeah thank you so that's the creative introvert.com same name as the podcast the creative introvert and yeah you can find it where all good podcasts are made (laughs) (laughs) always fun to hang out with you thanks so much for this conversation kat thank you so much sarah I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find out more about Kat and her work at thecreativeintrovert.com. Check out her podcast under the same name and check out all the links at the show notes, sarasinacroce.com forward slash GBR51. Also, our next Gentle Business Circle is coming up on September 9th. So if you share my worldview, I'd love to hang out with you in the Gentle Business Circle. It's a safe zone to hang out with other gentle marketers and help each other build our business and grow our impact. When you join the circle, you get a lively, uh, sorry, a live monthly circle Q&A call with me and fellow gentle marketers. And of course, if you can't make it live, you get the recordings. They'll be posted in a private platform. You also, as a bonus, get my authentic and fair pricing mini course, as well as secret bonus episodes every now and then. These calls take place once per month, every second Wednesday of the month. And the next one is coming up on Wednesday, September 9th. There are different levels of support starting out at only $7 per month. You can find out more at sarasanacroce.com forward slash circle. Next week, I'm back with another great episode about the new kind of leaders and what's required of them to bring forward the change we also desperately are longing for. So tune back in next week. Talk to you then. Take care.